Well, we're joined now by former Olympic athletes Ray Wixell, who is the CEO of Ray Wixell Consultancy, and Sydney Marie, who is co-chair of the Corporate Sports Entertainment International. Joining us to discuss in particular youth development in sport. Let's start with you, Ray. Uh, it struck me when we think about youth development, one of the great programs in South Africa was in cricket in the 1980s and 90s. Dark times in the country for other reasons, but for many young kids, boys and girls in the townships in particular, opportunities were given. Thousands of kids sponsored in particular by Baker's Biscuits, many cricket and so on. And it just seemed to be such a hopeful uh, enterprise that it would produce players to come through, but also to keep people busy playing sport, even if they didn't get to the highest level. It all seems to have gone. Well, we need more sponsorships. We need more bakers that sponsor cricket at one time. And that's what's really needed to develop our youth to that high Olympic level. Yeah, but uh, what's happened? I mean, it's an administration thing as well, isn't it? It's drive, it's energy, it's organization. Yeah, you know, getting the right administrators uh, to push the program and get things going and, and to understand really the sport too. Mm. Sydney, you're a South African yeah. athlete too, so it got developed as when, uh, when you were a youth and managed to make your way to the US. But uh, looking back at the current situation in SA at the moment, where are the fundamental flaws? Uh, Ray mentioned sponsorships, but surely uh, there needs to be some athlete who also shows initiative. Well, our biggest challenge really is the amount of youth that we're getting through the ranks to be able to develop them into national athletes. That has been the biggest challenge for our country. The pool has reduced tremendously. What are the reasons for that? Is it a lack of sports clubs, lack of sporting activities in schools? It is basically that, yes, lack of sports club, but the crux of the matter really was the dropping of the requirement for physical fitness in schools. So where that, was that and where is it now? That was derailed sport. It's been brought yeah. back now in schools. Uh, students are now required to, to, to have physical fitness as part of the curriculum. The challenge before was that uh, when it was dropped, you, the pool, Mm -hmm. was not there anymore. But I think also what, what's happened in the past is that you have certain schools which have been historically much better than other schools at producing athletes and sports people generally. Now one thinks of athletics, which is your particular background, sure. both of you, yes. track athletics, track and field as we, as we say. Uh, if you think of the number of schools in South Africa that no longer have athletics, even those big schools yes. which have lots of rugby and cricket teams and all that, not doing athletics anymore, it's just falling off the calendar. Few of the big Afrikaans schools still do it, but it's isolated. And then at club level, uh, there's no junior club, there's not much club competition in athletics anymore. So, I mean, is it got to the point where what used to be a thriving athletics environment has now got to the point where it's, it's almost disappeared? Can it be recreated? I believe it can. I mean, if you look at the Afrikaans schools, they, they're strong in athletics. You know, when I first came to South Africa in 1980, you had Menlo Park, and you know, you had the great runners there. And they still operate. And they're still you? very, very strong. But what has happened is TV changed things. You know, a lot of TV coverage with rugby, with cricket, and so on. So if you have a great athlete that comes from an athletic background, he's inspired to be a rugby player or a good cricket player. Mm. So you're losing, you're losing him to the Olympic Games. Mm. Ray, can't you see maybe more international uh, athletes, track and field, or maybe within other sporting arenas, coming into SA and recultivating that interest in uh, the different sporting uh, arenas that they could enter. Well, I remember one stage we had Carl Lewis here from the United States. He did a couple clinics. I think we need to have more international athletes come here and give their expertise. Well, you have Sydney Marie and myself here mm. also that we could offer expertise mm. you know, to the schools but too. Sydney, you lived in the United States for a long mm. time. You, you were, you, your talent enabled you to do things in, in your life which perhaps you wouldn't have. I remember a long time ago, many years ago, <laughs> you took me around Attridgeville, your hometown. Yes. You talked about the prospects for the kids there. What have you learned in the States about youth development, well, which we can do here? Absolutely, there yeah. is a lot that one yes. learned uh, uh, overseas. And, uh, and I think the number one is to also try to push and develop our own role models youngsters yeah. uh, uh, thrive better if they can identify with a person who grew up in their neighborhood, who is now at a different level in life, who they can say, if that guy was able to be so successful in the little that he had, I'm able as well to do even better than he has. So the opportunity is there. I appeal in many ways to corporate South Africa again yes. to come back yes. and assist in sponsorship and other ways to help uh, uh, develop the youth of South Africa. 
Just yeah. a moment ago, David and I were talking about the average athletes. Obviously, no, not everyone can become a superstar, but yeah. what about the support for those average athletes, maybe getting them into coaching schools to go out and develop uh, community sporting facilities or even within uh, uh, schooling uh, activities? Well, we need more coaches in South Africa. We've got some great, great coaches, but we need more coaches. We need more educated coaches to actually help the, the programs, the different sports programs. Mm -hmm. But you've got a chicken and egg problem here. You've got businesses with sponsorships. Yes. They look at the sport, and if they don't see a well-organized sport, they don't want to get 100%. into it. 100%. Yeah. On the other hand, you've got some sports that may or may not be well organized, but uh, they need to get that first big sponsorship to get them on the road. And it's no longer a thing of a guy in a blazer who comes on a Saturday afternoon and maybe a Tuesday night. Yeah. You need full-time involvement. So how do we break that vicious circle of the sport or the sponsorship first? Well, first we need to get our house in order. <laughs> Our in, house in, is certainly in, not in order. It's not in order. They, yeah. we, don't, we, we, we don't show the confidence to the potential yeah. investor, which is yeah. the potential sponsor. If we show that our house is in order, we execute our business properly to the satisfaction of all the various uh, sponsors, mm. then they will continue to support us in many various ways.